Today we begin chapter two, the last chapter that you're going to have to work on this year. Woohoo! The first section in chapter two is polynomials and factoring. So in today's lesson, we're starting with topic one, which is adding and subtracting polynomials. So let's get some terms straight. First is a monomial. A monomial is a real number, a variable, or the product of a real number and one or more variables with whole number exponents. What? That's a lot of words for a math class. All right, let's look at each part. First is a real number. Five is a monomial. Square root of 17 is a monomial. One half is a monomial. A real number by itself is a monomial. Next is a variable. So any variable is a monomial. A variable represents a, some quantity. So x is a monomial. A is a monomial. P is a monomial. Now, the next part. The product of a real number and one or more variables with whole number exponents. Product means we multiply. So we're just going to take a, a real number times a variable. So we have something like 5x squared y to the third. That's 5 times x squared times y to the third. That's a product. We have the real number 5 and then the variables. Now, the variables' exponents have to be whole numbers. So no rational numbers, no fractions, no negative exponents, no irrational numbers like square roots. Okay, Only whole numbers can be the exponents. Now, when we have just a real number with no variables, that is known as a constant. So 5, besides being a monomial, 5 is known as a constant. Square root of 17 would be a constant. Our next concern is the degree of the mon monomial. The degree is the sum of the exponents of the variables. So when we have a term like 7x to the third, y to the fifth, the coefficient, the 7, we don't care about. What we're looking at is the exponents and their of sorry, the exponents of the variables. So we have 3 plus 5 is 8. So the degree of that monomial is 8. Negative 3 fifths, a to the third, b to the seventh, c. So again, the coefficient, we're, don't worry about the negative 3 fifths. We're looking at the exponents. We have a 3, a 7, and what's the exponent of c? The exponent of c is 1. We never write something to the first power. It's not 0 because then it wouldn't be there. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So 3 plus 7 plus 1 is 11. The degree of that monomial is 11. What about a constant like 9? Well, 9 doesn't have a variable. So again, something to the 0 power is 1. So 9 is like saying 9 times x to the 0 power. So the degree of a constant is 0. The next term we want to know is polynomial. A polynomial is either a monomial or it's the sum or difference of two or more monomials, which are known as terms. So a monomial like 5, that's a polynomial. x to the 6 is a polynomial. 42ab to the 9th. It's a monomial, and a monomial is a polynomial. x squared minus 5. Now, here's two terms that are related as a difference, x squared minus 5. So this has two terms. x squared is one term, and negative 5 is the other term. So the term has to keep the sign that goes with it. Here's a polynomial with three terms. The first term is 3a to the fourth. The second term is 7a squared. 
and the third term is negative 10. Now, what's really important and will become more important in math too is the degree of the polynomial. The degree of the polynomial is the greatest degree of any term. So when we look at this polynomial, 14a to the third, 2a to the second, minus 25. The two terms that have variables are the first and second term. The degree of the first term is 3. The degree of the second term is 2. And so the term with the deg greatest degree is the first term. So the degree of the polynomial is 3, the degree of that term. All right, try to figure out this one. 9x to the 4th, y to the 3rd, minus 2x to the 5th, y to the 6th, plus 4x to the 3rd, y to the 9th. Pause the presentation, figure out the degree, and then resume the presentation. When we look at this, the last term has the exponents 3 and 9, so 3 plus 9 is 12. The first term has 4 plus 3 is 7. The second term has 5 plus 6 is 11. And the last term, 3 plus 9, is 12. So the degree of that polynomial is 12. Now, try this one. What is the degree of x minus 5? If you said 1, you're correct. x has an exponent of 1. So the degree of this polynomial is 1. Now, look at this one, 3a squared b to the third, plus a b to the fifth, plus 9a to the fifth. Pause the presentation, figure out the degree of that polynomial, and then resume. Did you say the degree is 6? The first term, we have 2 plus 3, that's 5. The last term, we have a to the fifth, that's five. But the middle term has a to the first power and b to the fifth. One plus five is six. So the degree of that polynomial is six. Now, the next thing we wanna do is name a polynomial. And we have two names. One is based on degree. The other name is based on the number of terms. So here's a polynomial, 7. The degree of that polynomial is 0. So anything that has a degree of 0 is called a constant. There's only one term. So anything with one term is called a monomial. Okay, 4x. The degree of this, we have x to the first, so the degree is 1 and something with a degree of 1 is called a linear polynomial. There's only one term, so again, that's a monomial. 2x plus 7. Now again, x to the first, so that's a degree of 1. So therefore, it's a linear polynomial. Now there's two terms. A polynomial with two terms is a binomial. Next, we have 3x squared plus 5x plus 1. The degree, the highest exponent, is 2, so the degree is 2. Any polynomial with the degree of 2 is called a quadratic polynomial. There are three terms. Any polynomial with three terms we call a trinomial. 5a squared y. What's the degree? Well, 2 plus 1 is 3. A polynomial with a degree of 3 is called a cubic polynomial. Now, there's only one term there, so again, that's a monomial. Now, when we get higher degrees than 3 or more than 3 terms, then we get a more generic name for the polynomial. So this polynomial, the highest degree would be in the first term, 2 plus 2 is 4. So we're just going to call that a fourth degree polynomial, or a polynomial of degree 4. 
something with a fifth degree, we just say a fifth degree polynomial, something with a degree of 20, we would say a polynomial with the degree of 20. All right, that has four terms, so we're just going to say a polynomial of four terms. Okay, we're not going to start naming polynomials beyond trinomials. All right, so here's something for you to try. Pause the presentation and figure out what is the name of this polynomial by both degree and the number of terms. This is a seventh degree trinomial. The first term has one plus three is four. Second term has four plus three is seven. Last term has five plus one is six. The highest degree is seven. And there's three terms, so that's a trinomial. So that's a seventh degree trinomial. Okay, a squared plus 2a. How would you name that? That has a degree of 2, so it's a quadratic, and there's two terms, so that's a binomial. So that's a quadratic binomial. And lastly, what about this one? 5xy squared. x to the first y to the second, 1 plus 2 is 3, so that's a cubic polynomial, and there's only one term, so that's a monomial. All right, next we want to be able to write a polynomial in standard form. In standard form, the terms are written in descending order by degree. So we want to rewrite this polynomial in standard form. 7x minus 5 minus x to the third plus 6x to the fourth minus 3x squared. The term with the highest degree is 6x to the fourth. Okay, we have a 4. So that, become, that becomes our first term. The next term with the next highest degree is the minus x to the third. So that becomes our next term. The term with the next highest degree is negative 3x squared because we have x to the second power. That becomes our third term. And then what would be the next term? We have the 7x, which is x to the first. So that's our fourth term. And then, of course, we're left with the constant, the negative 5. So the polynomial in standard form is 6x to the fourth minus x to the third minus 3x squared minus 7x minus 5. So we have the degrees go from 4 to 3 to 2 to 1 to 0. All right, so here's ones for you to try. Rewrite each polynomial in standard form. 7 minus 3x to the third plus 6x to the squared. Pause the presentation, write that in standard form. In standard form, that would be negative 3x to the third plus 6x squared plus 7. Now try this one, 2y minus 3 minus 8 y squared plus 3y to the third. Rewrite that in standard form. In standard form, that would be 3y to the third minus 8y squared plus 2y minus 3. Going by degree from 3 to 2 to 1 to 0. <clears throat> now, sometimes we get um, expressions that have a lot of terms and some of them are like terms. So in order to put something in standard form, we have to combine the like terms and then put it in order. So here's a polynomial, 4x plus 3x squared plus 2x plus x squared plus 5. So we have some like terms. 3x squared and x squared are like terms. So we're going to put those like terms together. 4x and 2x are like terms, so we're going to put those together. And of course we have that plus 5, we have no other like terms. So 3x squared plus 1x squared is 4x squared. 4x plus 2x is 6x, and then we have the plus 5. So there's the 
polynomial in standard form. We've combined the like terms and then put them in order by degree. Okay, here's some for you to try. Combine like terms and write in standard form. 4x squared minus 3x minus x squared plus 3x. Pause the presentation, put it in standard form, and then resume. If you did this correctly, 4x squared minus x squared is 3x squared, and negative 3x plus 3x is 0. So they cancel each other out. All right, try this one. 7y to the third minus 3y plus 5y to the third minus 2y plus 7. Pause the presentation, put those in order, and combine like terms, and then resume the presentation. If you did this correctly, then you would get 12y to the third minus 5y plus 7. Now we want to add and subtract polynomials. So first we're going to add polynomials. So we have x squared plus 2x plus 3, and then we're going to add to that the polynomial 4x squared plus 5. So this is really easy. All you're doing is adding like terms. So first we have x squared plus 4x squared. That's 5x squared. Then we have 2x, and we don't have any x term in the other one, so we just have plus 2x. And then we have plus 3 and plus 5, so that's 8. So 5x squared plus 2x plus 8. Easy, right? Yes. All right, so simplify. Which is another way of saying perform the operation, like add. So 3x squared plus 2x plus negative x plus 9. Pause the presentation, simplify that, and then resume. Okay, adding like terms, there's no other x squared, so we have 3x squared. 2x plus negative x is 1x, and then we have a 9. So 3x squared plus x plus 9. All right, try this one. Negative 2x squared plus 5x minus 7 plus 3x plus 7. Pause, simplify that, and then resume. Okay, if you did this correctly, then you'd get negative 2x squared plus 8x. All right, next we want to subtract polynomials. Again, this is very basic, very easy to understand. <clears throat> 6x squared plus 3x minus 2 minus 3x squared plus 5x minus 8. Okay, we've got the minus sign in front of that polynomial. So that minus has to distribute to every term in that polynomial. So if I just rewrite that without the parentheses and distribute that negative sign, we get 6x squared plus 3x minus 2 minus 3x squared minus 5x plus 8, because minus negative 8 is plus 8. So now we want to combine like terms. When we combine the like terms, 6x squared minus 3x squared is 3x squared. 3x minus 5x is negative 2x. Negative 2 plus 8 is 6. So there's our result. Okay, so now I want you to simplify these polynomials and write them in standard form. The first one, 3x squared plus 4x plus 2 minus negative x plus 4. Pause the presentation, figure out the answer, and then resume. The solution is 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. All right, the next one, negative 5x minus 6 minus 4x squared plus 6. Pause the presentation, figure out the answer, and then resume. The solution is negative 4x squared minus 5x minus 12. Okay, the last thing we want to do is just be able to apply these principles to different kinds of problems. So we have two rectangles. 
Rectangle A has a side of 2x plus 6 and another side of 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. And so in a rectangle, we know the opposite sides are congruent. So the opposite sides have the same measure. Rectangle B has a side of x and then a side of 5x minus 3. So we want to do two things. First, we want to find the perimeter of each rectangle, and then we want to ask what's the difference of the perimeters. So before I go through this, I'd like you to pause the presentation and see if you can find the perimeter of each rectangle. All right, the perimeter of rectangle A. Remember, we have opposite sides are the same. So we have 2x plus 3 plus 2x plus 3 plus 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 plus 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. So the perimeter of rectangle A is 4x squared plus 10x minus 4. In rectangle B, we have 5x minus 3 plus 5x minus 3 plus x plus x. So the perimeter of rectangle B is 12x minus 6. Now, pause the presentation, find the difference between those two perimeters, and then resume the presentation. When I take 4x squared plus 10x minus 4 and subtract 12x minus 6, the difference is 4x squared minus 2x plus 2. Okay, that concludes our lesson on topic one of chapter two. So now you're ready to do the work from 2.1. Have a great day, Broncos.